Good morning. <coughs> what I'm about to bring to you is two issues. The first one is very, very serious, just like the second one. And it, it reveals lies, corruption, theft by politicians who do not represent the people. They should not be where they are because if you don't represent us, you have no right to even collect any money, let alone a paycheck. So without going into your paycheck, let's look at the issue that has arisen over the last couple of weeks. The first biggest one is gas. Don't say this is just a thing that's just popped up and it's an accident. Try and soft soap it. You know, the problem with you, Dodgy Roger, and you, Albanese, and all the Labor Party, Liberal Party, Nationals and Greens, you're all in bed together. That's the trouble we have. You are all in bed together. You have the same pol policies from a different angle. I had a bumper sticker a few years back. It says, no lie, steal, or cheat. Yeah, that's it. Politicians hate competition. Is that correct? 100% correct. You hate the competition. So you jail anybody who steals from you, and yet you steal from us all the time. You lie to us all the time. You don't forget, mislead, deceive, and all those nice little things you like to put in there. You lie, and you steal from us. And when it comes to the gas in this country, that's exactly what you did. You've got Bowen running around, oh, we want to get the emissions down. There isn't any. When the human race is 004 of 1%, emission, that, that's nonsensical to say that you can do it. You take that out, what does it mean? Nothing. Absolutely zero, because the next volcano blows up, fills that up again anyway. So what's the difference? You know, this is not about emissions. Klaus Schwab, you're absolute brain-dead fool to think you can overrule everybody in the world and take control of it. There's one thing standing in your way, dad, and you're not going to get around that. It's already foretold what's going to happen, and you're finished. You're just a fool with a big mouth trying to tell us we have to succumb to your nonsense. Well, you're not going to run us. You're not. You're going to lose. Why? Because God's word says so. But let's get back to this gas that you thieves have given away. It belongs to who? We the people. Read the Constitution. It says, whereas the people of New South Wales, Queensland, Victoria, Tasmania, South Australia and Western Australia joined together in one indissoluble federation of the Commonwealth of Australia. It can't be dissolved. So Queen Victoria put the constitution in place with a letters patent so it can't be touched. Don't like that tough. People have come and said, oh, the constitution wasn't, wasn't proclaimed. She didn't sign it. She didn't have to. You people are not understanding the preamble, especially Clause 9. Whereas the people, we joined together. When did we do it? When we had a referendum and said, we want the Federation. How did it get there? We, we, our forefathers, put it together. They thought about every single little aspect of it. But what you're not conce conceiving from what I've said in the past and what's in the Constitution, when Barton and others went to England, Queen Victoria got it and she sealed it. And that's sealed until a monarch breaks that seal. And they can't. There's a very, very strong reason why they can't. The monarch has to represent every single one throughout the British Empire. You can't do that. We, the people who were part of the British Empire, decided we would make a covenant with the reigning monarch to establish the Federation of the Commonwealth of Australia. You get that bit. We put together a constitution, and I say we because it's our forefathers, and I agree with what they did, because it was a brilliant piece of legislation and document. When it went to England, so did Queen Victoria, and she added the nine clauses for a reason, because when she sealed it on the 9th of July 1900 to come into effect on the 1st of January 1901, it was subject to the will of the people. She still had the law giving us permission, which is what it was, it's an enabling act. An enabling act enables us to have a constitution made pursuant to the act authorising it. Now, all the pieces in, a, in the constitution which says, oh, until the parliament this, until the other person this, or referendum this, all of that is there, subject to the signification of the queen or the 
king, whoever is the monarch at the time. You don't comprehend that? Pick up your constitution. I don't care what a professor tells you. Look at the constitution. Look how it's worded. It's worded very, very clearly. There's two lots can change the constitution. The reigning monarch, by removing the letters patent, which is the seal, they're sealed. You can't touch them. If she decides she's going to allow you to alter it, she will sign off on a law made by us, we the people, because it's not we the parliament. That's why the final say under 128 belongs to who? We the people. Whereas the people, we are sovereign and supreme. Absolute, supreme and uncontrollable authority remains with the people. Constitution states it. Now, if you've got all that down, right. Now, who owns the minerals, the gas, the fuel, and everything else under this continent? We do. Who has first preference to everything under this country or on this country? The people. You can add, uh, you can add all the Aboriginal scientists. Forget all that nonsense. I said prove it, and you can't. The land owned them according to their law, which is what I've been told by their elders or some of their elders. This is not an issue of who owns what in this country. This is we the people joined together in a federation. We the people decide if you want to cut off a section of land and give it to somebody else, we the people must sign off on that. The court does not have the right to decide, oh, they had it first. No, you don't have that right. If you do, tell me in the Constitution where it says it. Because the people at the time, did Aboriginal people or Native people or Indigenous people, because we are too, we were born here, we're Native and Indigenous, whether you like it or not, that's the law, and I'm not going to change that. You suddenly now switch it from Indigenous and Native, or oh, oh, now, no, we're the originals. No, you're not the originals. You're not, never were. So let's get back to the gas. You've got to put policy on gas. Who the hell do you people think you are? You do not own the gas. You do not own the minerals. Provision for us. If you're there serving us as our representatives, where is the provision for us? No. What did you do? You lied and you lied to the people then. There's 75 kilo terajoules, that's a lot of gas, per day. You're stealing off us by allowing Woodside and the Chinese to cut it off without paying a cent. Is that correct? Yes, it is. The Chinese are signed up supposedly to a contract, which is only agreement, because you can't contract with them without our permission. Bear in mind what I've just said. Who has the authority? We do. You didn't ask us, so you can't do it. Who told you you could sell all of our utilities? We didn't, so you stole them. Get them back. Put them back where they belong, under our control, because we don't have to pay for all the crap that you want us to. Who has to pay tax? Companies. Why aren't they? Why are they allowed to take our produce out of this country, pay a small royalty, take it overseas and sell it, and the money doesn't come back here? It goes to their offices in another country where they pay little or no tax. No, that's not what the Constitution says. You take a ton of iron ore, if it's worth 20 bucks, and you take a $1 royalty out of it, and the profit margin is, say, $15, how much of that are you taking in tax? None. Tell the truth. You're not taking anything. Those big companies are stripping this country bare and the politicians are getting their bank accounts filled up. Am I correct? Yes. Look at how many are going out of power. 100 million, 90 million, 20 million, 50 million. Greedy thieves. That is our money which you stole from us because you didn't get it from the wages you collected and you're not even supposed to get wages. You're supposed to be paid for the time you spend in Parliament, i.e. if you spend four hours this day, it might take you, like from Western Australia, four hours, so you catch a plane, five hours, you su supplied a room, you go to the Parliament, you spend four hours in Parliament, you get paid from the time you leave home to the time you get back, but not to go joyriding around the world like you bludgers and you are bludgers and thieves, do. Your policy on gas, a policy is not a law. It's a nothing. It's what the politicians call, that's our right under our political parties to have a policy of giving this to Sue. But you did a deal with Woodside. You did a deal. I knew, knew you did years ago. The only thing you did with Woodside, yeah, 
you would sell the gas to China at a lesser rate than anybody else. That's the deal you did. Don't lie and say you didn't. Woodside played along with it because all they had to do is, oh, we'll give you 75 terajoules a day and we haven't got it. Where is it? Why are you... And don't lie and say this has only just come about because there's a shortage of gas. There's no shortage of gas at all. The shortage of gas is because you've told Woodside they can take the rest of the gas and don't have to give us any. Don't say it's any other way or prove it. Prove it. Give us the gas they have to give us. They have to give us every single bit of gas that we need to run this state or this country. You can't give it to anybody else. And from that profit margin, which you've got to collect money from, i.e. if it's $20, as I said, you send it overseas, you pay 1% one, 1 royalties or 2 or 3% royalties, the rest goes to a company overseas. That money belongs to us, does not long belong to Woodside, all right? Woodside, you want to deal with them. It costs them so much, like 10, 15 cents a litre, maybe, so just say it's that, to produce a litre of gas. Well, why are we paying a dollar fifty or more, and in China they're paying five cents a litre for our gas? Why is that? Do I have evidence of that? Yes. Did I put it to the government already? Yes, I did. The federal member in Mount Barker, when I had a meeting a couple of years ago with Rod Cullis and a heap of others, I put it to them, what are you doing with our gas, letting China get it for five cents a litre and we've got to pay $2 a litre for our gas that belongs to us? Listen, the thing is, if you are getting a profit off Woodside, you should be. You are supplying gas for free, and you should be, because it's ours. The infrastructure belongs to us gas pipes, everything else in this country, belong to the people. Water pipes, the same. Sewage, the same. Why are we paying to construct things and then you're giving it to companies to make billions out of? Are you? Yes, you are. Look at Social Security. You sold them, sold Social Security to a Texas company. How does that one work? Where is the money in it from them? Where does that come? Don't tell me you pay them, pay them a nice little sum every week to administer Social Security. Why is that not run by the public service? Because that money belongs to every person in this country. Every man and woman that becomes of age 65, you don't have the right to change it. It's 65 for a man, 60 for a woman if they're working. But if they haven't working, worked, the man and woman are entitled when a man comes of age to a pension, full pension for both adults. And that isn't what you're giving them. You're giving them peanuts. It should be 780 to nine to between 780 and $900 a week. That is the basic wage. That's what you're paying for. Did we pay for it? Yes. You've taxed us since January the 1st, 1946. 7.5% tax to pay for a pension. Where's ours? Where's ours? You've stolen our gas, you've stolen our minerals, you've stolen all our public utilities. So where's the money that we paid? You're giving it to an American company to administer something you are forced to do by our constitution and supply a pension. It isn't a charity. You are forced to do it, both as a pension and an invalid pension. The welfare part, that is a charity. I have no problem with that. I have no problem with that. But you have to put that to the people to how much. Some people on welfare are getting more. You've got NDIS gives all these people that are injured huge amounts of money to use to be carded around. No, no, you can't do that. You need our permission. Why? Because it's our money. If it's not granted by the Constitution, you can't give it to them. You can't just charge us more tax, reap millions of dollars. I've heard and I've seen documents that show some of these people get between $92 and $100 an hour to pick up someone and take them down and then take them back sh from shopping again with all their stuff. How is that lawful? How is that lawful? A taxi driver doesn't get that. I don't get it. People working on the road, cops don't get it. They don't get that money. Well, why should they? Why should they get it? Oh, they, they're injured. Yeah, you've got invalid pension. You've got invalid pension. Provide a free bus service paid for out of consolidated revenue, which you get plenty of money from. You lie and cheat, and now look at that. The federal treasurer is saying, oh, the CDP is going downhill. You are a liar. The tax on fuel alone is trillions, not billions. Why are you lying to the people? Why are you lying? 
Now, getting back to the gas. Tell Woodside, go and get lost. Give us our gas to, for our stoves. And if you want to reduce emissions, put the gas back down where it belongs. About 10 cents a litre to pull it out of the ground. That's all it would cost Woodside or anybody else. 10 cents a litre or less. Why are we paying so much? Why does it have to go and be parity priced with some other country? You can't do that unless our constitution says so. It doesn't. Why is fuel parity priced with someone else? Because you are pouring billions of dollars into Singapore, into all the big oil companies, and taking our oil out of this country, ours. It belongs to the people, not you flea bags. Why are you sending our fuel over, closing, allowing them to close the refineries here? Why are you allowing them to do it? Why are you allowing them to? Yeah, and you are allowing them to. It's not your choice. That is our fuel, our oil. Our foundries built on our land. So have they paid rent for that? No. What are they doing? They can't own that land. Otherwise, show me in the Constitution where foreign companies can own land in this country. Lease it? Yes. Rent it? Yes. Can they own it? No, they can't. How can another country own land here? Look at how much China owns, according to you. It doesn't own one little bit. And this is not attacking the Chinese people. They're going out to get what they can. And you are our barrier to stop them getting this country. Instead, look at that, you're selling it to them. When you did the deal with Woodside in relation to gas, you give all that extra to China. Why? Right next to them in Russia is gas, oil, and right across the northern part of Europe, there's plenty of oil and gas. Why aren't they getting it from there? Because they get it free from you. Because you nice little people want to con up to the Chinese so the Chinese can walk here and take this country. You think that's going to happen? Don't fool yourself. The resilience of the Australian people will not let you do that. We will stop you. And do we have the right? Absolutely. As I said before in the last video, under Clause 61 of Magna Carta, we can do what we like to stop you doing what you're doing. And you say, oh, you're reasonable force. No, that doesn't come into it. Reasonable force is what we reasonably think we should do to stop you stealing, murdering, thieving, committing rape on our kids, uh, rape on our families, injecting us with crap that is killing some people, not all of them, some. Now, in relation to our pension, goods and services tax, another theft by you clowns. And I'll read this to you so you know. Mode of exercising the taxing powers. Next, there is an important regulation or qualification of the mode in which the taxing power is to be exercised by the parliament. Laws imposing taxation must deal only with the imposition of taxation. Any provision in a tax-raising tax law dealing with matters foreign to the tax is declared to be nullity of no effect, section 55 of this constitution. Kindred to this is the mandate that laws imposing taxation must deal with one subject, subject of taxation only. To this there is an exception in the case of customs duties and excise duties. I don't need to talk about customs and excise because you have the, the right and fact the duty to collect that on behalf of us because you're, you're there to serve us. But can you law deal with two subjects of tax goods and services no it can't that law is fraud nobody in this country has to pay gst it's theft howard got in oh yes we're going to do the right thing we're going to remove all other taxes or remove nothing they've increased the other taxes and now you want to increase them more because you want to raise you've just given yourselves one so you're stealing again where is our tax where is our gas you talk about not having enough money in the treasury you're a liar your documents if they say the gdp is going down where are you sending it if you're not sending it in to consolidate revenue you're lying every single cent should go there you didn't borrow any money from overseas, you created it. It doesn't exist. And you're paying it back to where? Where's it going overseas? The Klaus Schwab and his morons? Where'd the GST do go to? The Pope. 10% GST went to the Pope. We didn't sign the Uni Droid Treaty. Gough Whitlam did. Why isn't Gough Whitlam and the Labour Party paying the GST to the Pope? Because if you're not, you're committing blatant treason against the Crown of England, which is what we filed to Mr. Rosendahl in the House of Commons. Treason. Treachery to overturn the Constitution. Wage war on the Crown. That's what you're doing by taking 10% of the earnings of this country and giving it to the Pope. Are you? Yes, you are. You're stealing 10% of everything we purchase and giving it to somebody else. You're breaking the law of the Constitution anyway. You can only tax us once. Once. 
and you're taxing us twice. You've got sales tax on something, you can't put GST on it. You've got other tax on it, you can't put GST on it. You can't touch it. You can tax companies, why aren't you? Can you tax, tax us? No, you haven't asked permission. It's voluntary. If we don't want to, we don't, don't have to. But you're lying and cheating and stealing and saying, oh, you signed a bit of papers, you've got to pay it. No, we don't. We didn't contract with you. Contracts between two people. Everything in the contract is explained. Both parties have to agree and both parties sign and agree. That's never happened. You're a liar. So there's no contracts unless they're rich. Oh, you think your birth certificates, your parents have signed you up? No, they haven't. They can't. Because once you come of age, it doesn't exist anymore. It never did. And to start off with, they can't. Can sign a contract on your behalf. But we have a Bible and we have a constitution that says we are free. So the only deluded fool here is Rob Sudi and Tim Prater. They've written a book on the delusion. Yeah, well, that's what is happening. But that's not law. Our constitution is indissoluble law. Our Bible is indissoluble law. The King James Version, original one. It is a delusion to think you're free. Unless you're going to stand up and be free. You have a God-given right to be free. We are sovereign. We are supreme. The parliament is not sovereign and it's not supreme. How do I know that? The constitution states it clearly. Reference. 286 says we are sovereign and supreme. 676 says the parliament's not supreme. 791 says they're not sovereign. He's sovereign and supreme. We are.